can't help but think how much prayer means and how important it is to pray. God does answer prayer. And God is answering prayers here in this church and in this box. And so as we open our service this morning in prayer, I'm going to ask that if you have a prayer request, that you write it on a slip of paper and drop it in this box. Even if you may have realized, hey, I put that prayer in there a long, long time ago. It don't matter. It don't matter. God knows the heart. God may be wanting to see just how sincere we are in wanting our prayers to be answered and how important they are to us. So the more times we put them in there, the more God will know. Let's pray. Our oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come with thankful hearts, thanking you, Lord, for making it possible that we might come together here in this place. Lord, we thank you for each one that's here this morning in this service. We just pray, Lord, that each heart that's here will know what a wonderful and awesome God you are. Lord, we thank you for the answers to prayers that we've witnessed. And we thank you for every prayer request that's in this box. And Lord, we pray that you'll continue to answer prayers and that you'll help us to always remember that every time that we pray, we pray for this box of names. Lord, we want to pray this morning especially for <clears throat> the answers to prayers that we have witnessed. Just continue to grow our faith as we realize you keep your promises to hear our prayers, to answer our prayers. And Lord, we pray for our drop box outside, the mailbox. Help us to spread the word throughout the community that others might realize that if they cannot come and put their, net, their prayer request in this box here, that they can drop it in the mailbox. Or, Lord, they can just simply mail it to the church. Lord, we just pray that you'll open hearts, that you'll open doors, that people will see and come to worship. Now, Lord, your blessings upon this message this morning, upon this service, upon each one here. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like for you to take your Bibles, if you have them with you, and turn to Luke, the second chapter. <clears throat> By the way, everybody noticed the Christmas story. That was the first Sunday of Advent, okay? And we have the Christmas star, the star that shone and led the wise men to the place where Jesus lay. We went through the second Sunday of Advent, last Sunday. And now we are on the third Sunday of Advent. Still preparing for the coming of the Lord. Luke, the second chapter, I want to read beginning with the 25th verse of Luke 2, 25. I'm going to read through 30, 32. <clears throat> 25 through 32. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him, 
and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Verse 27, That day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. So reads God's Word. This is the day. This is the day. At that time, the scripture starts out, there was one called Simeon who had received a promise from God that he would not see death until he had seen the salvation that God had prepared for all the people. Now, this scripture that we read talks about waiting. Talks about waiting. And uh, that's what we're all doing, right? We're waiting for Christmas. How many here are waiting for Christmas? You just can't wait. You just can't wait. You know, it kind of reminds me uh, of our kids when they were growing up in the house. And, you know, we always started with the decorations and got the tree up and the tree trimmed and all the lights on it. Uh, and then we began to do the Christmas shopping, you know. And I don't remember if our kids ever made a Christmas list, you know, but some people write letters to Santa Claus. And the newspapers, if you've read of those, I like to grab the newspapers that are now because they'll have all the letters to Santa in there from the little kids. And I think it's funny sometimes what little kids will say. This one little kid who was waiting for Christmas and he, he had made his list out, he said, Dear Santa, when you come, there will be cookies on the table. I know we've seen that a lot, you know, and whether it's a movie or, or uh, someone writes an article or something, it's always about leaving Santa cookies and a glass of milk so that when he comes down the chimney, he'll have a snack. Well, this little boy said, Dear Santa, when you come, there'll be some cookies on the table, but if cookies are not enough, Use our, feel free to use our phone and call the pizza shop and order your pizza when you go. I thought that was kind of cute, you know. I'll order you a pizza uh, when you leave. <clears throat> All kinds of stories like that, that, you know, we're waiting for Christmas and some will even list all the things that they want. And this one little girl said she wanted one of those Etch-a-Sketch things, you know, and she wanted a doll, and she wanted some uh, Crayolas, you know. And then she said, but the biggest gift of all, she said, I want a color TV. But Santa, if that's too much, cut the TV out. I don't want to be too selfish. <laughs> kids usually say things like that. But our kids, when it comes to Christmas time, they were always interested in how many gifts was under the tree. You know, when you go out and you do the Christmas shopping, you try to get what this one wants and what that one wants. And uh, our kids would come down before Christmas and they begin to look at the tree, the presents under the tree, and they begin to count, you know. Oh, my brother or sister's got more than I do, 
you know. So Carolyn always had to try and make out that each one had the same amount of gifts under the tree. Now, you know, a lot of people hide the gifts till right up at the last time before they put them under the tree. Well, our kids would start snooping around to see if they could find the hiding place. Just can't wait till Christmas, you know. It's still, what, nine days off? Our kids would even attempt to see, well, my brother got a bigger present than I did, or sister, however the case might be. And they would even check the size and the weight, you know, which one's the heaviest. You can fool them, though. You can put a rock or a brick or something in one, you know, and that way you can kind of fool them a little bit. Well, they were so not wanting to wait that they would even start in a couple of days before Christmas. Can't we open just one gift early? Just one gift early? Because it's too hard to wait. Well, the text to this message this morning is waiting not for Christmas, but waiting for the Lord to come. And what the Advent season is about is preparing ourselves for that coming. And so rather than to be thinking about Christmas trees and trimming the trees, and by the way, Cliff, I think you did a good job on the decorations. And you all might want to tell him, especially with the star on top. You see, that's preparing ourselves for Christmas and reminds us that it all started with that star.